Trashy and in your face. That's Lula and Jimmy, the new film from Oskar Röhler. Happy New Year and welcome to Kino DWTV's German film magazine. As a director, Oskar Röhler is impossible to pin down. His new movie tosses out the rule book and mixes genres with wild abandon. We met up with a one of a kind director here in Berlin. Director Oskar Röhler, a man with funny glasses, an expert in human misery, and a filmmaker who never fails to surprise. His latest film is a complete departure from the type he's usually associated with. I wanted to give people a film like a beautiful, fluffy cream pie. Germany in the 1950s. Jimmy and rich girl Lulu embark on an illicit affair. The style is reminiscent of the films of David Lynch. If David Lynch set Wild at Heart in Schweinfurt. Lulu. I'm Jimmy. It takes place at a time that, for me, was the last magical era. In the 50s, unfulfilled desire, secret yearning, and dark family secrets were the order of the day. Katrin Sass gives a wonderfully over-the-top performance as Lulu's demonic mother, a kind of German Betty Davis. Lulu has been promised to Ernst, the son of a prominent Schweinfurt businessman. What have you beiden Turteltäubchen denn heute Abend vor? I have Karten fürs Autokino. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, Ernst. Each one of Oskar Röhler's films has a different look. The director likes to keep his audiences on their toes. His experiments sometimes fail, but often they result in triumphant and moving films. Most of them are based on his own extraordinary family history. No Way Out was filmed in black and white. It's the desperate story of Röhler's mother, the writer Gisela Elsner, who took her own life at the age of 55. What soll ich denn da? Ich habe doch keine Chance. Ich habe doch überhaupt keine Chance. <laughs> Angst is the tender tale of a couple who destroy each other despite their love. Röhler is not embarrassed to admit that he drew from his own experience of marriage in making the film. But he says he's now put that style of drama behind him forever. I don't like films anymore with two people just walking around or lying in bed or talking over the kitchen table. I'd rather make a James Bond movie. Röhler's lighter comic movie The Elementary Particles was a departure from his previous works and his first literary adaptation. Oscar Röhler is no man for well-trodden paths. He's never afraid of trying something new. Lulu and Jimmy plan their escape. Du wirst es kaum glauben. Ich war in Hamburg. Ich dachte, ich besorge uns eine Schiffspassage nach Amerika. Was? Ja. Was? Ja. Das glaube ich dir nicht. Aber es stimmt, Baby. In provincial West Germany, things were really like that. In their own way, they tried to live the American dream. The director knows what he's talking about. At the age of three, his mother left him behind in a provincial town with his wealthy grandparents. Like Lulu, she wanted to escape the constraints of small town life. Later, the love story takes a twist and becomes a gangster film. 
Du bringst dir mir doch bestimmt wieder, oder? Mhm. Mach dir keine Sorgen, Große. Gib mir ein paar Tage. Dann serviere ich dir den Neger auf einem Silbertablett. Ohne seine verdammten Eier. Those were the films I always loved. I thought, okay, I'll risk it. I'll try and make one myself. The result is a farcical, monstrous fairy tale, but it's not the director's best told love story. His previous films contained more realistic and moving portrayals. <laughs> Not really. A lot of people would disagree with you. At the end, a fair few tears were shed. With Lulu and Jimmy, Röhler has fulfilled a long-time dream. And the land is dark, and the moon is the only light we will see. Next, I'm going to make a film about my own family saga. It's going to be really long, with a break in between, a real epic. I've got to do it. Maybe you'll like that one better. <laughs> you don't have to be a fan of all his films, but it's pretty difficult not to like Oskar Röhler, perhaps the most stubborn and obsessive of all German directors. Markus Rosenmüller has become famous for breathing new life into the very German genre of Heimatfilms. Rosenmüller is a workaholic. He shoots two films a year. His latest is set in the 1930s. It's a parable about the rise of national socialism seen through the ordinary lives of Bavarian schoolchildren. Alexander wants to win the school painting contest. And to do that, he, shall we say, borrows a bottle of Perlmutterfarbe or mother of pearl paint. Then he spots a book which he could really use for his painting. But the paint and book get him into trouble. One mishap after another for Alexander and the situation starts to spin out of control. The special thing about this material was that it was a story about a rascal. I love being able to work with such energy, because children just have a lot of pep and approach existential things with such youthful naivete. That was great, and this story has real substance. New student Gruber gives the story depth. He quickly sees who has something to hide. But instead of clearing up the matter, he decides to turn the situation to his advantage. The school becomes a microcosm of the social upheaval in Germany at the beginning of the 1930s. Gruber has already seen to it that something will be found. He turns a student from the B class into a scapegoat. A bogus piece of evidence triggers a war. I tried to incorporate these two things in the film. Every now and then you have to decide whether to be a good person and be truthful or to tell those little white lies that make your life easier but hurt other people. If nobody notices, we think it doesn't matter. And perhaps that's the monster in us all. Gruber is the villain. He turns into a vicious leader and denounces dissenters as traitors. Just like the 1930s novel of the same name, the film captures the threatening world the Nazis are about to unleash. Okay, 
But Rosenmüller's film is also a light and spirited tale. With plenty of humor, it explores major themes like lust for power and peer pressure. Perlmutter Faber is a charming tale that pays attention to detail. It's a film about the concept of truth and its corruption and abuse. Ah, this is the life. Drinking champagne while a valet parks the car and you wait for the film to begin. A dream made real here at the Astor Film Lounge. That and more on our shortcuts. The Astor Film Lounge on Berlin's Kurfürstendamm is Germany's first luxury cinema. Customers are welcomed by a doorman and treated to a drink in the foyer. Personal service and style are the Astor's hallmarks. Oysters are served at premieres and finger food is always on offer, in contrast to the popcorn and cola typical of the modern multi-screen complexes. Quality instead of quantity. Owner Hans-Jochen Fleber says he wanted to bring class back to cinemas. It's what I've always imagined an evening at the cinema should look like. You can eat and drink, the seats are comfortable, there's a cloak room and no stress. Customers should be able to relax here, really relax. The building was carefully restored to offer its guests an authentic 1950s cinema experience. The personal service adds to the luxurious atmosphere created by the decor. Comfortable leather chairs with plenty of leg room hark back to the heyday of glamorous evenings out. Adding to the atmosphere is the auditorium's variable colored lighting. It changes to match the mood of the film. The remodeling cost around 800,000 euros. Most of the investment was for technical improvements. The opening film was Baz Luhrmann's blockbuster, Australia. It was perfectly suited to show off the auditorium's excellent picture and sound quality. Since the Astor Film Lounge opened three weeks ago, every screening has been sold out. It certainly seems to have filled the market niche. The film Age and Beauty is a tale about male friendship, aging and dying. Three aging men visit their dying friend and feel helpless. Brauchst du irgendwas, Manni? Können wir dir was besorgen? Ich hab's ja nicht wieder gesehen, seit wir auseinander sind. Ich habe ein einziges Mal gesprochen. Rosi, weißt du? Ich will nur wissen, wie es ihr geht, ich meine. Manny wants to see the love of his life one more time to ask for forgiveness. But the former queen of the clique declines at first. But then she does come, and all of them feel young again, and strong enough to reconsider the past. <laughs> Rosie and Manny finally come to understand each other better. Weil ich keine Lust mehr hatte, dass jemand alles über mich erfährt. Das heißt doch, dass dich keiner wirklich gekannt hat. Wenn ich mich jemals gezeigt habe, war es mit dir zusammen. Du weißt mehr von mir als jeder andere Mensch. Friendship and forgiveness are at the core of this heartfelt film. Sport ist Mutter eigentlich immer so? Immer. Das ist ja voll schön. Wirklich genial. Wie ich schon mehrfach betont habe, herrscht auf dieser Klassenfahrt absolutes Handyverbot. The Wild Chicks and Life is about stress at school and everyday disasters, about falling in love and going all the way. Ein Zehntel Hühnerleben ist doch eigentlich lang genug, um... Und wir lieben uns. Das ist doch ganz normal. This is the third Wild Chicks movie. It reunites the flock of experienced actors, including star Veronica Ferres as the mother of top chick Sprotter. Okay. Dein Vater. Grüß 
A youth hostel becomes the scene of crises and petty jealousy. This adaptation of Cornelia Funke's bestseller deals with adolescence and growing up. Meine Tage sind seit zwei Wochen überfällig. Ich bin vielleicht schwanger. So, jetzt wisst ihr es. Wir wollen einen Schwangerschaftstest. Ja, alle? Nein, einen. Für alle. Sometimes the girls' problems are less earth-shattering. Ich glaube, ich habe mein Quill vergessen. The latest installment of this popular teen series is certain to be a box office hit. Das gibt Drache. Wir sind schon sehr gespannt. Ihr seid so doof. It's hard to describe why Christian Petzold's films are so compelling. His movies are precise and unadorned. Not a single word is wasted. Give them a chance and they pull you in. Like his latest, Jericho. The temperature is well below zero in this chilly tale of a fatal attraction. Jericho is located in northeastern Germany. It's a desolate, godforsaken backwater. Thomas lives in the home of his dead mother. He's been dishonorably discharged from the army. He's deep in debt and out of work. Director Christian Petzold reinforces the drabness with shots that seem to go on forever. He's very good at allowing the audience to feel the melancholy of his characters. The first films I remember seeing, I was around eight, and they were so sad. I remember almost exclusively sad films, with maybe 17 or 18 comedies mixed in. But when I think about it, they were sad too. Six days a week. We have two hours, not too knapp. Comes off two, two and a half. Turkish entrepreneur Ali offers Thomas a job. Ali owns a chain of takeout stands, and Thomas has to resupply them. He soon meets Ali's wife, Laura, a fateful encounter. Good morning. Good morning. Laura. Schön, dass du hier zugeschaut hast. Ich mache nämlich gerade deine Arbeit, Lieferung zusammenstellen, den Wagen beladen. Laura ist eine schöne Frau, ne? Warum solltest du sie nicht anschauen? Ich habe dich beobachtet heute Morgen. Dreh um. Das ist die Straße nach Stein. Dreh um! Benno Fuhrmann, Nina Hoss and Hilmi Zürzer play the main roles in Jericho's unfortunate love triangle. And they're very convincing. It's a world in which everyone tries to fit in, but still remains a stranger. And zeig mir mal, wie die Deutschen tanzen. A trip to the Baltic Sea reveals how trapped the three characters feel in their everyday world. Friendship, love, partnership, none of it seems to mean anything to them. Fleeting moments of passion are followed by pain and betrayal. Almost every scene of Petzold's film feels like a blow or bite. The past is in pieces and can't be easily put back together. That doesn't negate life, but it means life becomes more complicated. A phrase like, love's all that matters, may make sense at 18, but at 35, it's not that easy. Ali is not only betrayed by his employees, but his wife as well, and not just in bed. Hallo? Hallo. Wo bist du? Ich hol die Zusatzlieferung. Welche Zusatzlieferung? Die vom Getränkebremse. Na ja. Ich habe den Hallit rausgeschmissen. Er hat beschissen. 
bei Ali finde ich toll, dass es eine Figur ist, die... I think it's great that Ali is a character who does all he can to make his business succeed, but still falls by the wayside, because he never really feels at home. And I think that's an important point in the everyday reality of life in Germany. Even when it comes to sex in Jericho, only one thing matters, money. Laura has been stealing from her husband. Wo ist denn das Geld versteckt? Da drüben. Almost every scene of Jericho is predictable, but that doesn't make the story any less suspenseful. On the contrary. Komm. I always liked that Hitchcock films were never really surprising, but were still full of suspense, because the audience knew something the characters didn't. I tried to do the same with Jericho. I didn't try to surprise the audience with great plot twists. Rather, I wanted them to ask how will it happen, not just to enjoy the mounting pressure, but also withstand it. The climax leads the three characters back to the Baltic Sea. Ali? In a love triangle, three's a crowd, but who will take the fall? In the end, Christian Petzold really does surprise us. Eastern Germany isn't all doom and gloom. The comedy Aussies 11 takes a lighter look at the East. It's an hilarious parody of Ocean's 11 and it's our DVD giveaway. For a chance to win, just write to us and give us your critique of our show. Here's our address. DWTV, Volterstrasse 6, 13355 Berlin. Email kino at dw-world.de. It's going to be a big year for German cinema. We've shown you some of our favorite films from January, but that's just the beginning. Here's what we have to look forward to, our sneak preview for 2009. <laughs> 2009 is sure to be an explosive and varied year for movie fans in Germany. A year chock-a-block with international productions and famous names. Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise playing Hitler's would-be assassin, that'll be exciting. Valkyrie cost over 80 million dollars to make. The film stars Hollywood darling Tom Cruise as key plotter Klaus von Stauffenberg. I serve my country. But I have betrayed my conscience. The film's production in Berlin was beset by problems, including accidents and technical mishaps. German cinema goers will be keen to find out how Hollywood treats this major event in German history. It only matters that we act now before we lose the war. Otherwise, this will always be Hitler's Germany. And we have to show the world that not all of us will like him. That is not enough for me. There has to be a chance of success. Then find a way. 2009 will be a great year for cinema because of all the literary adaptations. I'm looking forward to that. The year of bestsellers on the big screen. The adaptation of Bernhard Schlink's novel, The Reader, hits German screens at the end of February. The German-American co-production about guilt and forgiveness stars Kate Winslet and Rafe Fiennes. Winslet won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress. How wrong can you be? A German production of Pope Joan by Donna Wolfer Cross is scheduled for release at the end of the year. It's finally in post-production after being beset by earlier problems with financing and casting. Johanna Wokolek plays a woman who allegedly became Pope in the 9th century. The film's director is Zunke Wortmann. This year I'm particularly looking forward to seeing Julia Jentsch playing Effie Briest. Effie is a free-spirited woman. She's suffocated by her social circumstances. Dieses Genie meine Tochter will, habe ich nichts dagegen. Kennst du ihn auch? Theodore Fontaine's story of a woman's disgrace has been transformed into a stunning costume drama with rising star Julia Jentsch at the helm. Is that his sleep? That is Freiheit. The film event I'm most looking forward to is the Berlinale. 
For German cinema fans, Berlin's International Film Festival is always the highlight of the year. They have become the bank of choice for money laundering. Everyone is involved. CAA, you are covering with Russian organized crime. This year's opening film is The International. The thriller by German director Tom Tuchver cost 50 million euros. It stars a host of A-list actors and is set in various European locales. You don't have the authority to arrest me. Who said anything about arresting you? But will the film be enough to finally allow the German director a spot on the Hollywood A-list? 2009 is set to be a huge year for German cinema. For the first time ever, ticket sales for German productions are expected to exceed 30% of the domestic cinema market. From German history with a Hollywood touch to adaptations of literary bestsellers, there will certainly be plenty of variety for cinema fans to choose from. And here on Potsdamer Platz is where the International will have its world premiere. We'll be there for the start of the 59th Berlin Film Festival. See you then.